Hello everyone, and welcome to this month's webinar. Today we'll be talking on travel, in particular car travel, and what you can claim in your tax returns. It's a, it's a topic I get a questions a lot on this one, so I thought I'd just try and clarify a few of those sort of things that people don't really understand um, and maybe make it a bit clearer for everyone. A bit of a disclaimer, but who am I? I'm Derek Nolan. I'm the owner of 12 Chartered Accountants. Been doing these webinars for a long time now, so if you haven't watched any of my other ones, this is the first one you've watched, make sure you check out all the other ones I've done, either on YouTube or on my website at uh, www.12.com.au. So today we're gonna to talk about travel, but we're gonna break it into a few different categories, mainly about employees, because a lot of people that really don't understand what they can claim um, in the tax return is just employees. I'm going to break that down into two different categories though. Those who are, um, I guess for want of a better word, regular employees, and those who are itinerant employees who travel around a fair bit and you know, travel agents and um, people you know, who just travel a lot. Um, Thirdly, we're going to talk about self-employed people or people who have their own business and are actually working from home or can claim they're working from home. And the fourth one, which is a lot of confusion over this one as well, is actually work and study and what you can actually claim going to university or TAFE and things like that. So that's what I'm going to go through today. Hopefully I won't be too long because I normally can go on a little bit with some of these things. So just firstly, I wanted to make a really clear distinction between what a deduction and a reimbursement is. Because a lot of people still come to me and say, oh Derek, I wanna claim car deductions in my tax return. And a lot of times, they, what they really should be doing is going back to their employer and getting reimbursed for it. Because if you get reimbursed for it, you actually get more than you do if you just claim it as a tax deduction because a tax deduction basically reduces your income, so therefore reduces the amount of tax that you have to pay. And it's only ever the amount you get back as maybe a higher refund is the tax rate that you're on. So if you have $100 worth of deductions and your tax rate is 32.5%, well, you get $32.50 extra back in your hand. Now, with a reimbursement though, if you go back to your employer and get reimbursed that $100, you have $100 in your hand. It's a big difference. And the important thing about reimbursements, it's not accessible income. It's not like an allowance, we'll talk about those things later. If you just get reimbursed for something, like it could be for milk, it could be for staff amenities, it could be for car travel, things like that, you don't have to declare it as income, but you get the whole amount back. Much better than a tax deduction. But anyhow, what we're going to talk about today is the tax deductions side of it. And what it all boils down to is actually how you claim it, and it's the kilometers. It always comes down to kilometers. Now, basically there's two different ways of claiming car deductions in your tax return. The first one is the cents per kilometer method. Now, a lot of people are familiar with this one. The tax office have worked out that it's roughly, well it is, 68 cents per kilometer on what a reasonable amount of cost it is to use your car. Now, this doesn't matter whether you've got a Porsche or a Corolla or a Volkswagen, it doesn't matter. This is just an average and that's what you have to take from the tax office. They used to separate into slightly different rates for the different size of cars, but that's been um, changed a number of years ago, which is 68 cents per kilometer per car. Now, what they do under the cents per kilometer method, there is a maximum though of 5,000 kilometers per car per year, which is really important to know. So the, the biggest claim you can actually make then if you just got the one car is $3,400. The other method, which usually is a, is a higher deduction, is what they call the logbook method. Now that's where you claim all your running costs of the car, your, your, your fuel, your registration, your insurances, repairs, the depreciation, the interest on the car, all those things. But then you have to apply a percentage of use. And that's where it comes down to keeping a logbook and you have to keep a logbook on how many business trips you take 
compared to your private trips. And that applies a percentage, which is then applied to all your costs. And that's your deduction. So what we're gonna talk about today is the kilometer part of that, both under the cents per kilometer, how many kilometers you can claim at 68 cents a kilometer. Well, how do you work out those kilometers? Which ones of the travel is a legitimate claim? And the same with the logbook method, where you try to work at the business or the work-related travel compared to the private. Well, which one goes into the work category? That's what we're gonna talk about today. But if you want to go and look at some other webinars I've done, one on fringe benefits tax. This is a really good one, for particularly for self-employed people with companies. Go and watch the one on fringe benefits tax, all your questions answered. It mainly focuses on motor vehicles. Because one of the big questions I always get is that, Derek, I want to buy a car, should I buy it in my own name or my company's name? So I answer that, um, that question really well in that webinar. And the other one which I did a few years ago as well on how to make your car a tax deduction. So again, I go through those two methods in a lot more detail, the cents per kilometer and the logbook method to work out how you actually do the calculations and what you can claim and, and things like that. So if you wanna go and kill yourself on those ones, um, go and watch those ones. They're on my website or on the YouTube. So today though, we're gonna talk about the kilometers. And the first one we're gonna talk about is employees. If you're an employee of a company, this is for you. So the first thing you need to understand is what is your regular or normal place of work? Where do you turn up every day to do your work? Now for most people watching this, it's fairly obvious where they go to every day is their normal or regular place of work. It's, pretty, it's where you perform your normal duties. Um, there's a definition there which talked about, you know, um, your regular place is um, pretty much where you spend most of the working week and where you sort of earn your income. So, so most people will won't have too many arguments on where their normal workplace is. We'll get into some other examples later when there's a few people watching this go, well, hang on, I don't have a regular place. But for most people, they know where their regular place is. And we'll start with that first. Because I think most people get this, that travel between your home and your work, your regular workplace, is not deductible. So those kilometers that you travel is not, it's not part of those kilometers you can claim under the cents per kilometer or put into the work-related bucket when it comes to your logbook method. Um, most people understand that trips between home and work are generally considered a private travel. And there's nothing you can claim about that. This is for employees we'll talk about, um, self-employed people and people with um, small businesses later. Now, a variation of that is if you have two separate workplaces. So for example here is a second job. You may be an accountant by day and a bartender by night. So with this one, what the tax office says, well, you usually can't claim the normal going from home to your regular place of work. Can't claim that, no one can really claim that. But what you can claim is the travel from your regular place to your second job. 100% you can claim that, as long as you don't go home. You have to go from one regular place to the other regular place. You can claim that travel as one of the kilometers um, in the method. And going home then from your second place is not claimable. So as you can see there, there's a little bit you can claim uh, between going between two jobs. Now, again, a, a, a lot of people understand that and not too many people will question um, too much about that. Another variation of that is an alternative workplace, which isn't your second job. Um, the common thing there will be a client's premises. So you have your regular workplace where you spend you know, most of your working week. But on occasion, you may have to go to an alternative workplace. Now that could be a customer, that could be a supplier, it could be, um, another location, it could be a factory that you know your business owns, or whatever. It's just an alternative workplace. 
in most cases will be a client and for these examples I'll sort of stick to that one that's pretty easy to understand which is a client. Now that travel from your home to your regular place of work again is not deductible. But obviously the travel between the regular place of work and your alternative place of work, your client's premises, is deductible. And the important thing there is when you come back again, it's also deductible. And when you go home again, it's not deductible. So it's one of those things that if you drive to work and then you're asked to go and visit a client, like um, a lot of my clients, a lot of my um, staff here we might have to go and do that, so I pick up some files uh, from a particular client, they'll use their own car. Now, what I will usually do is reimburse them for it. So what we're talking about here is the tax deductibility. Of reimbursement, that's for a discussion for another day. But if your employer doesn't reimburse you, you should ask them to do that because really um, it's only fair. What we're talking about here is when you aren't being reimbursed it because what the tax office think happens and this is probably why they've limited to 5,000 kilometers under the cents per kilometer method. And a lot of times when you don't get a car allowance, which we'll go into a bit later, is that and you're trying to claim a large car deduction, the tax office is a bit suspicious. And the reason is, is because they think that your employer has already reimbursed you for that. And now you are trying to double dip and also claim it as a tax deduction. So that's why, you know, most times you should be going back to your employer and getting them to reimburse you for it because that's important because, again, like I said before, you'll be getting 100% of that cost back as opposed to only getting your tax rate of it back. So, so let's assume you haven't been able to reimburse for it. This is what you can claim under the cents per kilometre or the log method is the travel between your regular place of work and your client's location and then back to your regular place of work. What you, again, what you can't do is if you go to your regular place of work, to your alternative work, your client's place, and then if you went home again, sorry, you can do this. So this is important to understand as well because what you see, they're going to the client's place and then leaving the client's place, <clears throat> whether you go back to your home or the regular place of work, that is deductible. So this is one of the few times when you can actually go home and that leg of your trip is actually deductible. So that's important to understand. A lot of people lose their way on that. I think, oh no, because you're actually going home and you're going from work to home, that shouldn't be deductible actually. And what I didn't explain was all these examples are straight off the tax office website. So this whole webinar, I've really just picked the eyes out of what the tax office has said and tried to make it in, um, in Derek speak. Another example is if you go the other way around. So if you go from home to your client first, and then you go to your regular place of work, same thing in reverse. So if you go ho from home and off to see a client first, well that travel is claimable or deductible. Then if you go from your client's place to your regular place of work, that's also deductible. It's the bit where you now go home because you're back at your regular place of work and just a regular trip home is not deductible. So that's important that it's got that one extra leg there, which is your, your home to your client's place or vice versa. That one is claimable. Another important then difference to that one is if you just go straight to your alternative place of work, your client, and then home again. Both legs there is deductible. You don't have to go, I hear a lot of people say, oh no, the only way you can do that is to go via your place of work. Well actually that makes it non-deductible. So don't do that. Even if you do, don't say you did. Just go straight home. Um, and then go to the office afterwards. You know what I'm saying. Okay, that was to do with you know, clients. And everyone sort of gets that. As soon as a client trip is involved, you really should be putting your hand out to your uh, employer and asking to be reimbursed. But with a client, most of the time, the trips to and from the client's premises, doesn't matter really where you go after that, whether it's to home 
or to your regular place of work, those trips are deductible. So um, keeping a track of all this, go and watch my webinar on you know, making your car a tax deduction. It talks about how to keep log books and diary entries and all that sort of stuff. We're not going to that today. Now, another alternative is what they call shifting places of employment. So a shifting place of employment is that, we'll go into the definition of a sec, but if you're sort of on a daily basis, you're, you don't have a regular place of work. So you might have an office where your, your employer is, and you might turn up there once a week or once a month, but most of your work is going around different locations. Um, I'll go through a few examples in a sec, but what you'll find is all that travel is deductible because you don't have a regular place of work. So that was our very first thing. Well, where is your regular place of work? You might go, well, Derek, I don't really have one. I could be all over the place. Um, we've got a number of sites all around the city and um, I don't really have a particular place that I go to. So that sort of travel, again, you should be very reimbursed for this, but if you're not, all those can be um, claimed. Another one that is important is if you're carrying bulky tools, now I've got a plenty of clients that work at Qantas and they say, oh yeah, I'm carrying tools all the time. Um, if you are carrying bulky tools, and I'll go through the definition in a second, well, the travel from home to work and back home again is deductible. But what you need to do is you need to carry bulky tools or equipment that you actually use at work. Um, and you can't leave at your workplace. So this is where a lot of people at Qantas go, oh yeah, I, I can't leave it there. Of course you can, but, but, but they try and justify that they, um, that they couldn't. So it needs to be bulky and because of their size and their weight, it needs to be transported by a motor vehicle. You can't sort of carry it on the bus or anything like that. So if you sort of tick those few boxes that are you know, required at work, you can't store it at work for various reasons, and it's large and bulky that you need a motor vehicle, those sort of things, then you've opened up the whole door to be able to travel. And one of the few people that actually claim the, the, the distance between your home to your work and then from your work home again, if you're covering these tools when you do it. So that's a really important one for um, people, particularly um, tradesmen and people like that, um, who really store everything in their ute. I'll just go through a couple of points here of things that you can't claim. So if you drive between your home and your work more than once a day, well, you still can't claim that. A lot of people turn up at work, and, oh my God, I forgot the file. So I gotta drive home. So they sort of say, well, I'm already at work, so therefore I'm going out and I'm gonna come back again. Unfortunately, if the file was at home, that's just going home again. So you can't claim that when a lot of people get um, Think they can. Uh, same thing is if you're on call. If you think you're at home and you could go out at a moment's notice to work, you can't claim that. Now it'll be different though if you if you have to go to a client's place. Like if you're on call to be able to um, to go and help a client. But but I know my um, my nephew. He sort of he 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 works for a place that supplies farmers um, their, their their goods. So he could get a call in the middle of the night if a harvester breaks down. So he's got to rush up to work, open it up and get the, I don't know, the, the thing that has to repair the harvester. He can't claim that travel, even though it's you know out of work hours or shift work or anything like that or regular, because it's still, at the end of the day, going from home to work. Now, if he went and got that, um, that, that item then carried out to the farm, It'd be a different story because you're going to have to see a client. But if you're just going to to and from um, home to work, you can't claim it in any circumstances. Another favorite one is people try and say, well, I have to drive my car because there's no public transport. Again, you're still going from home to work. Doesn't matter how you actually um, get there. We'll go through this next one in a little bit more detail when we start talking about someone who actually does have a their own business. But if you're going from your home-based business to another work, 
Believe it or not, even though our example where we talked about going from your regular place of work to a second job, well, that's claimable. Unfortunately, the tax will say, no, no, you're not actually doing that. You might actually be based at home as part of your work, but the moment you got up from your desk and walked out the front door, you've already left that place of work and you've gone home again. And going from home to your second job is not deductible. I know it's a fine line, that one. And when I read that, I didn't believe it was true. But if you think about it, it is you're still actually going from home to your second job, which is um, not deductible. So that's a bit of a nasty one. And a lot of people don't realize that one. Um, and this one is very popular, particularly during COVID, is you do some of your work from home. So therefore, because you're at home, and you, you, know, you didn't want to be at home, and you went off to um, work then, you know, once a week or once a month as people are doing now, that's still going from home to work, so you can't claim any of that. Okay, so I think that covers most of the regular stuff as an employee, what you can and can't claim. Where it gets tricky is for the people who don't have a regular place of work. Those people, and the tax office called itinerant people. Itinerant people, I think that's the way you pronounce it. That, um, yeah, they're a little bit different. And this refers to shifting places of work. So it's pretty obvious when you have a regular place of work. But for all those people who go, Derek, I really don't have a regular place of work. This is for you. So I'll quickly go through a few examples here of you know, what you can, can and can't claim. A few things is like, we'll go through these in a bit more detail, but travel is a fundamental part of your job. So if you're a sales rep, um, and you just, that's what you do, you get in the car in the morning and off you go to see clients, or you off to go, you know, to traveling interstate and all that sort of stuff. Um, another one, we'll go through the definition of what a web of workplaces is in a second. It's very similar to one of the examples we just talked about. Another one is you continually travel from one work site to another. Uh, and the last one is that basically you wait, when you wake up the morning, you're off you go to your first one, you don't know where your next, next appointment is. We'll go through a few examples there. But these are the people where really at the end of the day, they don't have a regular place of work and just go through a few examples. So where travel is a fundamental part of your job, like I said, um, people like um, sales reps that really they wake up in the morning and off they go to see um, clients. So, or they might be going to different locations. So the first example here, we've got Lisa. Again, this is straight off the tax office website. So she is a supervisor of a chain of retail outlets. So she obviously travels to the different retail outlets during the week. And occasionally, um, once a week maybe, she goes to the head office to file a few reports. So. Her pattern is she goes from home, wakes up in the morning and goes off to the first store, then the second store and the third store. And maybe at the end of the day, she drops in at head office to drop off some files and then goes home. What she can claim is, now we know a little bit more about it, is pretty much all the trips from home to all the different stores and to the, uh, the main office. But that last little one there, between the office and home, she can't. Okay, so, so for the vast majority, she qualifies as being an itinerant traveler and she can claim most of the travel, so she needs to keep all the kilometers. Now, if Lisa was clever, what she would do is she would do it this way. She'd go from home to store A to store B and then to the office and then see store C on the way home because in that situation, all her travel is then deductible because that last leg is from a store to home again, which is deductible. See, so so Lisa here needs to be a little bit clever there to make sure that she um, she makes sure she sees uh, one of the stores on the way home. Now, the web of workplaces is very very similar to Lisa's ex uh, example. This is where you you may actually have uh, it's more to do with clients and different locations. So in this example here, Jimmy sells equipment and supplies to a pharmaceutical company. So he's a sales rep. So he travels around different clients every day, not the same clients, he's probably got 100 or 200 to visit in a month. 
but he occasionally attends the head office on a monthly basis to complete some paperwork. So again, very similar to the Lisa ex um, example, but this time where Lisa was going to s internal stores, Jimmy's going to clients. And it's pretty much the exactly the same story as Lisa, is that he can claim all the different travel except from the office to his home. So of course, Jimmy needs to be a bit smart as well and make sure that on his, from, from, the home, from his um, employer's office to home, he drops in to see one last client for the day. Okay, so that's what the Weber Workplace is all about. And the tax office sort of talk about this a fair bit in their examples. Now, just to clarify though, there's another example here where Chris works for an accounting firm, where he goes to the main office three days a week, but the other two days he may go out to a suburban office or offices. Now what the tax office say there that, that Chris doesn't have a web of workplaces. What he's actually got is a web of regular workplaces. So, so he's not like going to seeing clients or multiple stores. It probably comes down to um, a, you know, specific examples and I know where it becomes regular. So if you're um, an accountant and, and your accounting firm's got five offices, that's probably still regular. If it's got 10 offices, maybe still regular, but they'll come to a point where you can't be expected to go to every office and then it becomes a web. But in most situations, you've only got probably one or two different locations you can go to to work. This is different to having a second job. This is just like if, you're, if, if, if we had an office in Sutherland and we had another one in, in Hurstville and I go and visit um, the location in Hurstville, that's obviously claimable but still part of being a regular place of work. I may not go there as often as the Sutherland office, but it's still regular. So that's an important, that doesn't qualify as a, a web. A couple of other examples here is a continual travel. So this is when someone wakes up in the morning and off they go to do travel. They're not sure where they're going each day, but the main thing here is they, the real the realistic position is they're probably going to go and visit more than one location a day. There may be some times where they actually wake up and they go to one location and they spend all day there and they come home again. So all that travel is probably claimable. But it's not it's it's more regular to go to multiple sites every day because one thing here that is specifically exempt under the tax office rules is casual teachers. So you might be a casual teacher where you don't know where you're going to work at the start of the week, but you get the phone call at eight o'clock in the morning that so and so is sick, can you come in today? And off you go. The tax office still consider casual teachers as you go from home to the school, that's not deductible because you're going to a regular place of work. You may not have been to that school before, but that's what they specifically say because you're not expected to go to that school for the morning and another school in the afternoon. If you did do that, well obviously the travel between the two places of work is deductible, but the home bit isn't and the home bit isn't. So it's really important that you um, to understand that, that there is a distinction there. So here's another example is Tara works as a repairer for office equipment. Like um, we get those guys coming in here to fix our um, printer all the time. So she's advised by mobile phone during the day which clients to visit. So she doesn't wake up in the morning and sort of know where she's going to go today. She might only have one client to do, but she might have 10. So she doesn't have a regular place of work and she's sort of under the classification of probably not having a web of clients, but she has this continuation requirement. So the same thing as before, all the travel between clients and the office is deductible, but that last trip from the home uh, sorry, from the office to home is not deductible. So again, Tara would have to make sure that she sees one client before she goes home and things like that. So that's the, the thing sort of take away from all these different examples. And the last one there was sort of talking about the uncertainty of locations. A bit like Tara is that you don't really know where you're going to go for the day. Uh, it's very similar. So here's Paul 
This one's slightly different because Paul heads off and he may, he's a shearer, and he may actually go to a property for a number of days. So, but because he's actually living on the different locations, usually the travel between them is actually deductible. So, so there's not too many things I, I saw when I read this, what actually comes under the uncertainty of location um, deductibility. I think fruit pickers, um, shearers were the only two examples that the, um, the tax office gave. So that's deductible for all you shearers out there watching my webinars, as I'm sure many people are. The last thing I just want to make a point of is that the fact that an employee is given a car allowance or a travel allowance doesn't justify that you can claim as a deduction. A lot of people go, well, I got a car allowance, so therefore I, therefore I must be able to claim all my, um, all my kilometers as a deduction. So they might be getting a $10,000 a year car allowance. It's still up to them to justify the kilometers and the logbook method and things like that. Just getting an allowance, because that's taxable. You gotta pay tax on that allowance. You're still gotta be able to claim the deduction. Now, in my other webinars regarding how to make a car, a deduction of things that I do talk about. If you aren't going to be reimbursed or you want to claim a fairly large car deduction, you do need to be getting a decent allowance because the tax office think, hang on, there's double dippling happening here. So the allowance is very good to help you get the deduction, but at the end of the day, they're not related. You still have to go out there and make sure you do the kilometers, logbook them properly, keep a tally of the kilometers, of all the things we just talked about to get your deduction. The allowance is not good enough. All right, so just quickly, we're gonna talk about self-employed people, people have their own companies, people have their own business. Now, I call them home-based business, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Now, if you wanted to watch a couple of videos I've done on home-based business, or if really, just, if, you, if you're a small business owner, you may have an office. But in certain situations, well, a lot of situations, you actually say that you do a lot of the work at home as well. Because once you do that, it opens up a whole world of being able to claim a lot more deductions because employees can't claim home office deductions. But if you've got a business or a company or a sole trader or even working through a trust, and you can say some of your work is being done at home, it opens up a whole heap of more deductions. And one of those things would then be able to travel for example here, so if you can say that part of your work as a sole trader or, or a small business is at home, every time you get up and leave the how, the home to do anything, go and get equipment or supplies, do the banking, go to visit clients, um, go to the post office, um, go and see a tax agent, all that travel is now tax deductible. You might have gone shopping on the way to the tax agent, it doesn't matter it's deductible. So, so I've done some really good webinars on this one. One of them comes under all your home office tax deductions explained. I go through again as an employee, but more importantly, as someone has their own business. And the other really important thing is, is regarding personal services income. Now, a lot of people have watched that one and they understand whether they've got a personal service business or not or actually their income through their company is actually personal services income. Because one of the big deductions is the home office deduction and the travel to and from home. So, so if you haven't watched those videos and you're a small business owner, go and watch those ones because it makes the home office deduction a lot clearer and a lot more exciting for you. Exciting, that's what I like. All right. So I won't spend a lot more time on that because I have covered in those other videos that I've done. The last one I want to spend a little bit of time on here is work-related study because I get a lot of questions there and it's surprisingly different to what a lot of people think. So work-related study, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a whole webinar on this one day. I've got one sort of half planned at the moment on what you can claim for self-education. Now, that's pretty boring, but what I'm looking at is the particularly people that have their own business and they've now got children going off to university. And coupling that with employing your children 
and then paying for all their fees, including the hex fees, we're not going to pay their course fees, and claiming it as a deduction for them is very exciting. So I'll, I'll do a webinar on that one day and go into a lot more detail about self-education. All we're talking about today is just the general work-related deduction for people. So if you're studying and there's a fairly strong relationship between your course, if, say if you're doing a Bachelor of Commerce and you're working as an accountant, fairly strong connection there. As long as the course is required for your current employment or is going to improve your current employment position, either at that location or at another employer, the costs are usually or regularly uh, tax deductible. So what we're doing, we're not gonna go into all the other self, um, the uh, you know, course fees and photocopying and all those sorts of things. We're just gonna talk about travel today for, for self-education people. So what you can claim, so here's a couple of another example. So say you are made that connection already, you're doing Bachelor of Commerce and you're working as an accountant. What you can do is you can travel from home to your place of education, university, TAFE, whatever you're doing. That travel is deductible. You don't have to go via your regular place of work. A lot of people get this one wrong. They think they no no they can't claim going straight to university. They've got to go to their work and then go to university. That's not right. Home to the place of education is deductible. And guess what? Coming back again is as well. So, so you could live in Sutherland and your university is at Wollongong. And you wake up in the morning and say, today's my university day and off you go down the highway to Wollongong, 82 kilometers or something like that. Go to university, turn around, come back again. There's 164 kilometers done, dusted, easy. You don't have to go to work that day. Other examples, if you did go to work that day, so say you went to the place of education, and then you did, in the afternoon, go to work. This is the weird one, that's not deductible. Because the way the tax office look at this is you're just still arriving at work and you've left home in the morning. And they don't give you a deduction for that. So they don't give you a deduction for going for work, but they do give you a deduction to go to university or TAFE. Go figure that one out. So, and then of course going home is not deductible. So this is probably a little bit different to people what they thought. So that's why I do these webinars to try and explain these things. And this is this again straight off the tax office website. So I'm just really you know, passing on the information. Um, another one here was say you went from home and did the other way around. You went to your regular place of work first. And a lot of people do this way and then they sort of go to their um, evening lectures um, or tutorials in the evening. That travel, it is deductible all of a sudden. So going from home to your regular place of work, we're pretty sure that that one's not deductible. That was our, my very first example. But going from your regular place of work to your place of education is deductible. And that sort of makes a little bit of sense. What doesn't make sense though is the next one, which is when you come back again. Well, that's sort of deductible as well. Hang on, we just talked about going from your place of education to your work wasn't deductible, but in this situation, because you hadn't come from home, it's like going between two workplaces. That's the way they consider it. So, so go figure that one. And then going home isn't deductible. So again, go back and look at these examples again. You'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The, just the last one, just to throw you everyone, is if you go from home to your regular place of work, we all know that's not deductible. Then you go to your place of education, which we now just worked out is deductible. Now, to do the complete the triangle and you go from your place of education to home is, believe it or not, not deductible. Again, I don't know what the logic behind that is, but that's what the tax office have um, put in their examples. So you may actually have to go back to your place of work before you go home, who knows, but anyhow. Um, so again, think about like, so if you're 
got your office in Sutherland and you live in Sutherland and you've gone to your regular place of work and off you go down the highway to Wollongong to go to university and you finish your classes there and you go directly home. That 82 kilometres is not deductible. But hang on, you might think, well, I have to go back to the office and pick up my calculator. I left it there. So back you go to work before you go home, that 82 kilometres then all of a sudden is deductible. Now, how you record all this, go and watch my webinar on that, you know, logbooks and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I'm just passing on the information of what is and what isn't deductible. I'm going to wrap it up there because there's a lot of information. Go and watch it again if you sort of need to. Um, but those examples, again, I think they're fairly clear and um, hopefully got a little bit out of, um, out of the webinar today. So again, make sure that you go and check out my website at www.12.com.au. That's the word 12. Go look at my webinars there or go and check out on YouTube under 12 Accounting. All right, thank you very much. Now, again, please feel free to say hi. The web, um, website has a sort of contact um, um, page there, but also just feel free to just email it to info at 12.com.au, give us a call. Got any questions, it'd be great to get some feedback. And um, thank you very much for watching and uh, goodbye for now.